All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I go about applying Danish oil to wood. Now, if you look at this video, I actually used the same product back in high school to apply to this coffee table I made uh, in my junior year of high school. And I still have that today in my living room. Now, over the years, I've probably refinished it twice is about it. And it, uh, it gets a lot of abuse and use out in the um, front room there. But there's a lot of advantages to using Danish oil. Uh, one is that it's easy to apply. Uh, it also comes in different colors, so you can actually stain the wood while you're applying uh, your finish to it. Uh, this finish also soaks into the wood to give it a, a durable finish, and then you can also use something else like um, a varnish or a polyurethane over the top of it to give it a gloss finish or to give it a, a typical um, type of finish that you see like in most uh, cabinets or restaurants, things like that. I just like the Danish oil finish. I like the smooth finish that it gives. Uh, it lets the wood show through and it really brings out the grain in the wood. So one of the other advantages is the application of this. There are many ways that you can apply this. Uh, one of the ways that you can apply it is by using a uh, rag. And you can see here, my son is actually applying that to the cabinet that we're making, the bookcase that we're making. Now here I have some of the adjustable shelves that I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I'm going to use a little different method. I'm going to use a um, paintbrush, which is another way that you can put it on there. So when you use this, you want a paintbrush and I got a container to pour it in and to pull it from with the paintbrush to make it a little easier. Rubber gloves to be on my painting hand. And I have a tack cloth here and I have just a cloth here that I'm going to use to wipe off the Danish oil. Now, uh, prep work, you know, you finish the wood and you sand it down. Now, if you run your hand across the wood and you see little bits of white or the sanding residue, then you definitely want to wipe down the wood. Uh, that just makes the finish go on a little bit smoother here and a little easier and with less uh, garbage in the finish. So I'm just giving a quick, just a quick wipe here. And put this back down. Now, Danish oil does need to be uh, shaken quite a bit, so you want to make sure that if you purchase it, you don't know how long it's been sitting on the shelf, so you definitely want to shake it up. I actually shook this up a little bit before we started filming, so I know it's, uh, it's pretty shaken up. And I'll pour some into here. That should be enough. Now, the key thing about using uh, oil is that you want to keep the surface wet. You want to uh, apply the finish and keep the surface wet and don't let it dry out. If you let it dry out, what happens is the wood's gonna soak in the oil, number one. And if the surface dries out, then it forms that protective layer. And then when you apply any more oil after that, it's not gonna soak in. The whole idea is to soak it in as far as possible. So you want to, uh, as far as possible, into the wood. So you want to make sure that you um, go ahead and soak it and keep it wet for a little while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply a liberal coat of this. And the nice thing is you don't really have to worry about how you apply it. Uh, you don't have to paint with the grain or anything like that. You can just uh, get it on there and just try to get it on as quickly as possible. And you just want to give it a nice soaking. Now, you don't want puddles on it. You don't want it to pool up like, like here where this uh, drip is coming where I'm bringing the brush across. You don't want it to puddle up like that. You want it to be wet, but you want it to be a good solid coat. Now, normally this might be a little thicker coat than you would probably apply if you were applying a varnish or a polyurethane. But you want to keep it wet. And like I said, the, depending on the wood, some wood soaks in really fast. Now this is mainly plywood with the, uh, with the um, taping material on the end here that uh, and, but this actually wood the tape that we use is actually uh, maple wood tape uh, they do have some that are not actual wood it's sort of a plastic and of course this wouldn't uh, wouldn't work so well with but because we have a wooden edge it works pretty good now again all i'm doing is just spreading it out so it's nice and even making sure everything stays wet now you can look at it through with the light and find any dry spots and then sort of hit them again before you flip it on over. And I'm going to flip this on over and I'm going to go ahead and oil up the other side. 
Now the other advantage of using an oil, like Danish oil here, is that you don't have to worry about uh, dust so much because, um, because the, the actual finish soaks into the wood, you don't have a finish coat on top of the wood that can uh, collect dust. Now you notice when I, when I use a circular motion to spread it all around here, uh, after I do that, I do come back and I go with the grain of the wood and just give it a nice even stroke across there so that I have a nice even finish on it. So I'm gonna let that flow out here. And it takes a very little time to get these done. And we actually have four of them here, but I'm just gonna show you on this one here how I apply it. Now, one of the things that does happen all the time is that you will get some extra along the edges here. Make sure that you just wipe that off uh, so that you don't get a big old drip mark. So we are gonna wipe this off, but what we're gonna do first, and I'm gonna flip this back over to my original side. And you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but right here, I got some drips that happened on the other side that have dripped over and fallen along this edge here. And so that, that's what I mean, you just wanna make sure along the edges you wanna be somewhat careful. Now again, I'm just going back over here and let me keep this wet. So you wanna keep it pretty wet for about 15 minutes. And um, then after that time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe it down so that it dries off and then you put it aside. Now, if you do this correctly, you, you're only gonna need one coat, or actually, you know, it's a couple coats that you've put on, but you only need one application that will actually work for this. But you can, if you do wanna put another coat on, if you see some spots that just weren't quite, um, you know, finished to the way that you like, like there's a nice, not a nice even sheen going across there, you can sand it down with some like 600, five to 600 um, wet and dry sandpaper is what I use. Sand it down, wipe it off, and then put another final coat on. That'll use hardly any oil at all because nothing will be soaking in. Now the advantage of a plywood and uh, these shelves here is that it doesn't soak the wood in, it doesn't soak the oil in as much as some other woods. Like if you use oak or something like that, oak soaks the wood in quite a bit. And then once you go and you wipe it all down at the end, you want to come out about every 15 or 20 minutes and wipe it down again, just to make sure that anything that seeps back up from the wood, uh, you wipe it down and get it smooth. Otherwise, you're going to have little drips or little um, puddles, would be the word actually, uh, along here of the finish in the end. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, continue working on this for about 15, 20 minutes, and we'll be back in... A flash. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. I've been uh, flipping the board over and um, looking at it, making sure that um, any place that I can see the light reflecting is drying out. I would just spread the spread the oil across here. Now, this is pretty much all I've been doing is just going across here like this. I've added very little oil since um, you know I put on the first batch there, the first batch of oil, and it stayed relatively wet. Now I'm, you know, it's um, probably high 60s in this room right now. I have a heater right over here going, but um, you know, it's not really overly hot. Now, if you were in hot weather, you definitely would have to add more uh, oil during that time. So now we've we've let this oil set, soak in for 15, 20 minutes, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to wipe it off. And it's really just that simple. You you take take your rag and you just wipe it across the surface here and you want something that doesn't you know produce a lot of lint if it has a little bit you know it's going to be messy but uh, you want something a lint free cloth or um, I don't know if you can use those blue shop towels you might be able to I've, I've never tried them I've always used a rag for this but you want to wipe off all of the excess oil and go along the edges here now I have used this oil without gloves. It's a good idea to have gloves um, on. I've never had any reaction to the oil with, without the gloves on. Let me flip this on over. And you can see that when you, when you look at it, you can see that you wipe it all off and you get this nice little sheen across there, nice flat sheen where there's no highlight marks. It almost looks completely dry. 
Now, again, like I said, depending on the wood type, and I'm expecting that this wood will have very little uh, residual oil seeping out through the pores. Uh, porous wood uh, soaks in the oil and it has the oil dries, it starts oozing out of the, the wood. So when you come back, you'll look and you'll see that there's a, a flat sheen across the wood here. And when you look at with the light, you can see these little um, reflective spots. These, um, uh, they almost look wet. And all you do is just take the rag and again, oops, same rag, don't do that. But uh, again, just same rag, you just wipe it across here. Now the other thing too is that you need to know about Watco oil or, or a lot of the oils is that they are combustible. So you don't want to take this rag all uh, wound up or all wadded up and throw it in a corner because it could catch fire, it could just combust. So you always want to make sure that you lay them out open like this if you got them someplace or um, put them in some water when you're done with them. But because I'm going to be using this some more, uh, we're just going to leave that right there. Now when I come back to this side that I've already wiped out, I can see that over by this darker area here, there's some spots here that look wet again. There's some oil that has actually oozed out a little bit. But a majority of this board just looks perfect. So again, I will just take this and wipe this down. Now you want to let it dry for about a day or two. Um, this bookcase, because it's a bookcase, we're not going to put any books on this until we let it dry for about 72 hours, maybe a week, I, you know, I'd go a little extra. Just make sure that when the weight of the book that's sitting on here, no oil comes back up, it's completely dry. And, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't get into the books or stick to the book. But um, right now it's a nice um, satin finish on it. It's, a, it's a, sort of a, a flat, I guess, I guess you could say flat finish on it, but it really makes the, the wood look good. So. That's pretty much all there is to applying um, Waco Danish oil and a lot of other oils. And again, like I said, this one is a natural oil, or maybe I didn't say it, but I am now. Uh, this one's a natural oils because I like to, to see the wood that I'm um, working with. It does give it a golden color. So any oil that you put on is gonna give it a little bit of a golden color. It's not gonna be perfectly clear. But uh, I, I like the way that it makes the wood look. If I wanted to, I could get some walnut stain uh, oil or uh, you know, they have, they have all different colors, some redwood, I don't know if they have redwood, they have red, reddish color, maybe a mahogany, um, Danish oil, and you apply it. But the only oil I've ever used is always been the natural. And this will actually be the wood that I will be using for my cabinets too, because it makes it easy. Later on down the road, I can sand it a little bit, buff it out a little bit, and apply some oil, and it looks like brand new. So it's really easy to repair further down the road. So if you like a nice, simple finish, you don't have a spray booth, you don't have uh, all the equipment that you need for that type of stuff, uh, Danish oil is definitely the way to go. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. Uh, any comments, please leave below. If you have a different way of applying it, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I know that uh, through the years, I've heard of many, many different ways of applying oil. This is what has always worked for me and the way that I use. So uh, anything you want to add, leave it below. I love reading your guys' comments, and I always answer all of them as much as I can. Again, thanks for watching.